Thank you for joining today. We can't thank you enough from Impact Utah and taking time out of your busy day. We know it is valuable and we know it's precious. Time is not infinite. It's like capacity in your factory. Uh, you wish you had more of it, but we just sometimes don't. So I'm Shane Barber. I am your master mechanic today. We view ourselves as your mechanic uh, of uh, partnering with you to help you optimize your organization. This is an ongoing segment called Impact 30. It's 30 minutes. Grab that bite, pull up a chair, and let's have a quick conversation, something that's thought-provoking, relevant, that you could uh, go out and use in your organization today. Today's topic is going deeper into the business excellence model. We're in a series of eight of these. We kicked it off with how to assess your company's health and optimize it. Today is diving deeper into the model that that assessment is built off of. And with that, we're gonna get rolling. Um, if you have questions, please raise your hand. Cody, my, my partner here, um, as I pause, he'll recap some questions he might've seen and I'll open it up for that. And um, we'll, we'll of course spend some time needed, but we only have precious 30 minutes. So I want you to be on time, no matter what you're doing today. So here's the six common issues that cause breakdowns. Think of the analogy, the organization, the vehicle, you're the driver. You have to have the coordinates of the vehicle, the people packing the vehicles, your team, the managers are keeping the wheels on the bus. So the six common issues that cause breakdown in the vehicle or the organization, number one is leadership alignment. Getting leaders 100% aligned on the strategy, on, on the direction you're going is the challenge. Anybody that says it isn't, it is. The only way you know if you're in alignment is talking about it. Second, siloization. That is a term I've trademarked it. Um, siloization is when um, two people walk out of a room, you walk out of a leadership team. I lean over to Cody and say, hey, Cody, how are you going to drive those changes in engineering? And he says, all that stuff, I'm going to do what I think I need to do in my, in my department. You do what you want to do. That is purebred siloization. Um, it subdivides and sub-optimizes your entire organization. Three, employee engagement. Employees will be, um, a lot of times when I meet the senior leaders, one of their pain points that I ask, what is the pain or your challenges, is my, my people just aren't engaged. They don't seem to, to get it or aligned. Immediately, I, I remind them that is leadership's role in engaging them by giving them the understanding of where we're going, why we're going there, how we're going to go there, who's going to uh, you know, uh, get them there, and then what their role is in it. Uh, fourth here, lack of collaboration and communication. Everybody says they communicate constantly. Everybody says, oh, we're, if you're a small company, we do this well. We don't need formal systems. You need a formal system. You need a visual formal system to communicate across the organization to make sure the telephone game's not played and you say one thing and other things happen. Fifth, variation. This is your quality system. If one person does it different than somebody else, there is a check engine light glowing. And then lastly, lack of metrics. Common metrics drive common behaviors. So these are, think of these as check engine lights. They start going off, you'll hear these symptoms, but we're gonna go deeper in symptoms, causes, and then quick fixes to do that as part of today. The model, again, it's back to a straight six. If you've been to the previous segment, we have an assessment that is aligned, self-assessment that is aligned to all six of these cylinders. These are the critical pillars in a business to optimize. It is not just operations and operational improvement. That is in the methods and tools cylinder. First cylinder strategy sets the cadence, sets the timing for the organization to run efficiently, just like an engine. Structure is alignment, leadership alignment against the strategy and having single point accountability for each one of your leaders um, and single point decision making. So clarity for your team, they know who to escalate to and they know who makes the decision. Third cylinder, people practices, people live in the structure. And the best thing to um, really remedy, remedy any issues here is leader standard work and routines of management, water falling from leaders to managers, managers to supervisors to leads um, of what those roles are and how you drive strategy to action. Methods and tools I've talked about, we call this, uh, what's inside this is the common, we call it the L10, top 10 lean tools, value stream mapping, 5S, uh, setup, changeover, all the usual suspects here, um, um, standard work that really is methods and tools to make office and production efficient and everybody in between. Lateral processes, we've touched on it a little bit. It's a fancy word for communication and collaboration across the silos, across the structure, across your divisions and departments. And then the last um, uh, 
cylinder here is metrics and rewards tied to the output shaft of the motor. Dashboard that sends a signal all the way up to the front of the vehicle into the cockpit that says your strategy is in action and it is working or it is not. So that is our model. That is how our assessment is lined up. You, it's a, a, a no cost assessment that you and your team take a line to each cylinder and it gives you a check, a check engine, kind of a mechanic check engine, just like your car. Um, so to now we're gonna go deeper into this model to look at each cylinder. Um, one, if anybody was thinking in their head, man, this sounds like a big corporate system. I assure you it's not. Um, small companies, straight six motor in this Porsche here is a six cylinder. Medium companies, like this Sprinter van has a diesel six cylinder. And then like this Detroit diesel, this motorhome six cylinder, just more complex, bigger, larger, harder to turn, harder to turn around, harder to tune. And so um, I've been using this model for since uh, the year 2000. I am a co-creator of it. Um, and I have used it in large corporations such as Intel Corporation. I had the highest performing factory of any factory in the world. I've used it as in, uh, in medium companies. And I've, I was an interim ops manager for a five person company. And it um, uh, is relevant. It's just to what size, to what comp uh, complexity, and then to what is relevant to the pain of the day. So that's all sizes it meets. Um, that need, but let's go under the hood. As your master mechanic, we're all mechanics in this. I'm your master mechanic. Hopefully you can trust me after today's discussion. You'll see if I have the ability to diagnose engines um, in your organization. So let's go under the hood. I'm gonna go cylinder by cylinder and I'll pause after a couple cylinders. So strategy, starting with the lead cylinder sets the tone, sets the cadence. Common problems. And as I share these, think if you have, be a mechanic yourself. Are you seeing these, feeling these in your company? Are people confused where the vehicle's going? Are people asking a lot of questions, but they're not saying, boss, I don't know where we're going. Does the organization have a North Star? Do you have a trip plan? Do you know turn by turn directions? It's like in a car. Leaders and managers, are they not working together to reach that common destination? You seem to be a tug of war between departments, between sales, engineering or design, production, shipping, receiving, office. Are goals being met? That's a first indicator. If you're not meeting your goals, your, your organization is perfectly designed to get the results you're getting. And lastly, if you find yourself fighting fires daily and never getting to look up, never seeing the light of day or the road or landscape ahead of you, um, you're not doing the growth planning because you can't get there. So common problems, do you have them? What causes it? Lack of strategic planning. But let's define that. People define strategic plan sometimes like ship everything we have. That's not a plan. I know you know this. It's a goal. Um, and ship everything we have is not a metric. So lack of strategic planning, you got to have clear objectives and goals. If you don't set them, you see the symptoms up top. Lack of metrics and measures. If you're not measuring what you say you're going to do, it is not going to happen. Or if it happens, it's by brute force and human glue. Organization doesn't know where you're headed. You have no gas gauge. You do, you, before you know it, it sputters, runs out of gas. The next time you get in, you go to the gas station every time because you don't fix the gauge like the old days. It's inefficient. And so you got to have people understanding the plan where you're going, measure that plan, objectives that are clear. They change every quarter. You measure those and you discuss them. Fixes. Engage the leadership team in a process that sets the destination. As a senior leader, do not take it all upon yourself. Engage your team, whether it's three managers, whether it's 12 leaders, whether it is um, 15, 25 leaders that lead divisions, um, engage them. Create strategic objectives and assign metrics. Strategic objectives are meta goals, really high level goals. And um, don't plan any further out than 18 to 36 months. The world changes. We know this. We just came from a the massive change and we're in another change now. And so set a realistic set of goals. Um, 18, 36 months is our preference and assign metrics. 
determine, break those down into quarterly goals and priorities that everybody can know. And you communicate, walk your production, your office and your design floors and ask people, what are your priorities and how does that align to where we're going as a company? If they don't know the answer, point the fingers back at yourself on setting or your leadership team and setting clear quarterly goals objectives. And then communicate to the entire organization we're headed. Don't keep it from people. Even if it's a half-baked plan, if it's good enough, tell people why you're going, why you're going there, what's at risk, who is the owner of those strategic objectives, and then what it means to them and what you need from them. And then monitor and measure frequently. So cylinder one, strategy, your check engine light is at the top. The causes are common in the center. Fixes are here at the bottom and siloization in your structure will cause it and a lack of destination and clarity. Some of these fixes, and I know I'm going fast, you can watch this recording, but we only have 30 minutes. Do you know your competitive advantage? And do you know how you differentiate yourself from anybody else? If you don't, how would you set a strategic growth plan to capitalize on it, to market, to sell, and to teach your customers why to choose you? So you must need those items um, you know, within that strategy. Some research would be great on who you compete with, and then understanding what you do differently, what you do um, better than anybody else on differentiation. And then identify those opportunities, set a growth plan, objectives, metrics as the output of this of this uh, task here. There's a lot packed in here, um, but 18 to 36 months plan built on the bullets above. Cylinder two, structure. Master mechanic, I'm reading your engine codes. Friction is a common problem between leadership. The ongoing fight between engineering or design and production. I'm sure it never happens in your plant. You 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 have your drawings are perfect and and uh, production never raises concerns about the missing of uh, critical dimensions and instructions. And I'm sure if you do, your engineering team is out on the floor, already found it, solved it and never copies and pastes the design and accidentally leaves those uh, things unattended to. So uh, silos divisions, fighting over resources, or completely hiding in the corner and not even talking to another group. I know that doesn't happen in your organization. Um, leadership action is slow. People ask for help. Nothing's done. They ask for help again, and they don't ask for help again. Then by the time you figure out that they needed something, you say, why didn't you say something? If they have courage, they say, I did. You didn't listen. If they don't have courage, they say, I was just too busy. Um, and then no one seems to be in alignment. And, and so common problems there. Causes. Number one, lack of leadership alignment. Here in this, uh, independent, working independent versus interdependent. All Everybody on your org chart at the top must have common goals, common metrics to drive common behavior against a common goal. They have to work interdependent, not independent. Um, if you want a quick read that's a good fable, five dysfunctions of a team exploits this. Lastly, lack of clear direction or decision making and lack of accountability. If two people own it, nobody owns it. Do you have a matrix on the wall that says this is the person accountable and this is the person that has the authority to make the decision at the top and everywhere in between? If not, fix it. Create common metrics to drive common behaviors for your leadership team. Develop a decision making process and then define single point accountability. One person owns it. And you can have backups, but there's a primary person of accountable and the rest of the organization needs to know that. So they need to know who to escalate to. So that is structure. Remove the silos by common metrics and behavior. Um, and you pull out your chart, how to do it. Look at your structure. Um, is it efficient? Is it clear? Do you have, it's not about an org chart, but do you have an escalation path? Do you have clarity? And then put accountability for engineering manager, manufacturing manager, and sales and decision making on it. So from a structure perspective, clarity of that. This next cylinder, and then I'll take a pause. People live in the structure. If people aren't enabled and empowered, you're not going to get engagement. Common problems reading your check engine lights, trying to hone your ears and eyes and your senses to look at your engine, look at your dashboard. If people seem confused, that looks like um, they didn't understand the directions, therefore they did some other task. They seem unmotivated, not engaged. If there's low performance, quality issues, easy to spot, and poor morale, 
Most organizations have been asked, what is your turnover rate? Ah, uh, yeah, it's not bad. Do you measure it? No. I always end with, should you? And I pause, should you? That's a symptom of low morale and all these other problems. What causes this? Lack of clear direction, them knowing where the vehicle's going. Clear strategy, objectives, and goals. Lack of clear expectations starts with accountabilities and it waterfalls from leader to manager to supervisor to lead to individual and then put expectations and work activities to that. Personal performance issues. Don't blame the person, blame the, the, the manager. Are you giving these things, these bullets above that clear direction and expectations? Um, always start with blaming yourself, then exploit that. And if not, then meet and talk about it. And then lastly, team relationships, cross team relationships. It don't matter if you're in a hospital, look at long-term care versus administration and clinical care that supports that. Services, building services, all those relationships must be against a common goal. If it's production, if it's manufacturing, it's same type of departmental team relationships. And then here, fixes, clarify those roles, clear expectations, not job descriptions. Those are meant to advertise for employment. They are not designed to uh, evaluate somebody against it. So you have to cl clarify the work activities and the accountabilities and behaviors. Understanding of strategy and goals. Make sure everybody walk your floors. What are our quarterly priorities this quarter? What is this month's? What is this week's? What is today's? Trust and verify. Align team and personal goals. Build people's personal goals lined up to the strategy. And don't forget what they want to do and can do. And then train and coach and develop them. And then give a path to grow their skills. I call this grow learning potential and earning potential. People systems, how formal from hiring to performance management and coaching to succession paths and, and career paths to um compensation alignment to the work. So this is your people cylinder um, that, that uh, is key to getting them engaged. Cody, I'm gonna pause there. Any questions that jump out at you or somebody have a hand raised? Uh, nothing on my side. Um, participants, uh, no questions on our side. All right, we're 17 minutes in. I'm gonna keep plowing ahead. Again, you can watch this video, um, relook at it, but I, I want to make sure that we don't uh, waste your time. All right, people systems here. This is a good blueprint. I just had said this, but hiring all the way to succession management. If you do not have these things in place, odds are high turnover rate. You're not um, uh, uh, able to hire people because people are interviewing you to see if these are in place and your team is trained to use them. Um, not everybody has HR, not everybody needs HR. Your best HR is um, skilled managers doing the job and having systems to do it. All right, four cylinder, methods and tools. This is a large cylinder. This is where lean, continuous improvement lives. Common problems. It is all about the quality of your systems and processes, also about people knowing and understanding how to use them. So product and process variation, if you have that, check engine light. Inconsistency between one bookkeeper to the other, check engine light. Between operator, check engine light, assembler, machinist, welder, packer, um, you know, delivery, check engine lights. If it's unpredictable, it's inconsistent, it varies. You have a, a breach in your quality system. What they cause, poor quality, low performance, um, issues with all indicators, let alone on-time delivery, customer complaints, employee complaints. You have two um, satisfactions that you should be checking the pulse of, your employee satisfaction and your customers. But these are indicators that are lagging. You want leading indicators to see if you are catching quality, catching variation before it goes to end the line. Worship to your customer. Fixes. Standardized process and methods. Design them simplified. Make it simple. If you have to speak Japanese to describe a lean practice, good luck with that. Um, we don't speak Japanese, nor do we have to. Do we need thirty minutes to explain standard work, which uh, or visual management or value stream mapping? Um, simplify it. Simplify the work. 
Um, identify non-value added tasks. This is a major frustrator of everybody in your company. I guarantee every one of you online has non-value added tasks. The only way to find those is by walking the value stream, walking your process. You can do it formally or informally. And then um, removing the waste when you identify it and do it with people, not to them. You might remove something that causes a downstream issue. Engage people in removing variation. People, this is an engagement uh, activity. They want to give them an opportunity to identify it, the waste, Give them an opportunity to give their feedback. Don't come in as the hero and solve it for them. Solve it with them. Open your ears um, and and close the the you know close your uh, commentary down. So four cylinder methods and tools. Here is those usual suspects. You know, plenty of things to do. Plenty of symptoms point to specific practices. If you don't have these, we sure do, and we will have um, impact thirties on these. We've had them in our past and we'll be glad to come out to your plan. All right, fifth cylinder, lateral processes. This is how your silos, your managers, leaders, supervisors, leads, and individuals talk and communicate against common goals and execute it. So common problems, gridlock. This feels like the whole plant's locked up on an issue. Confusion again, what's not happening is a symptom. Little to no communication or resistance. How many of you do a stand up in the morning and talk about issues? And then how many people don't show up or resist or complain once you are done, not to you, but to everybody else? That is a major resistance and you, you cannot replace getting to people. We have to go slow to go fast. We use this in our pit stops. We take a pit stop and say, time out. Before we do that next tire change in a, in a team building and leadership activity, we pause and talk about the next pit, just like NASCAR does, just like Indy does. And don't leave people in the dark. Coordinate, uh, coordination is low across those silos. Those, those are all symptoms. What they cause, if you're running meetings that aren't run well, shame on all of us. That is a waste of time. Look at, do an analysis of every meeting. If there's five people around a room, take the average salary of the people of that room times the duration that tells you how costly that meeting is. If you're not running it efficiently, you're wasting their time that they could be doing something else. Um, if they're not discussing openly the challenges and the issues, if there's fear to confront, or if they're just all, you know, talking about the game, who won, who lost, and not talking about the elephant in the room, the organization's performance and the issues around that symptoms and causes and performance is low or unpredictable back to variation fixes implement formal communication um, processes from leadership about talking about strategy to talking about priorities to all the way down to the production and office floors to talking about daily um, priorities uh, resource needs and giving them a chance to say i need help and coaching utilize visual methods to display your metrics if they can't see them the car's going to run out of gas Adopt serving leadership to remove these barriers. Go out and just ask a powerful question. What help do you need today to execute to your role, to these priorities, and listen? And then do something about it. Don't ask for feedback. Do nothing. And then ask again. Or do something and don't let them know you did it. That's a common failure. Um, and then make sure everything's aligned to strategy and the tactical goals. If it isn't, ask why, 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 why are we doing it? Um, and if it's not a priority, you should probably stop and talk about it. All common issues with communication. One thing I can guarantee this happens anywhere people and processes exist. I've, I've literally been in de doctor's offices, dentistries, millworks plants, aerospace, dairies. Everybody needs to communicate and using visual metrics, a dashboard and having, but the number one rule, Leadership needs to be present to win. Whether you're a lead, a supervisor, a manager, or a leader, you must be present to win, to, to hear what help they need. This is a good diagram of setting communication at all levels. Leadership lives at the top here. In the center is where leaders come down and say, here's the priorities for the month, the quarter, excuse me, the quarter, the month, the week. That's where managers join that conversation. And at the bottom is where managers and team members meet Daily, we recommend two, two times a day, st start up of the shift and then the accountability step at the end of the shift. How did you do against the goals you wrote down on a visual management display? And then if they hit their goals, celebrate it. 
reward with and recognize it. If and track the men, the mentor. If they didn't, ask why, 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 and how can I help um, from that perspective? And and but this is everybody in the company from leader all the way to um, the team that is on the floor in offices and in production doing the work. So it's how do you send feedback down on the priorities and then the check. Uh, the check loop here, this plan do check act is checking in on, is it working? Is our strategy working? Last cylinder, and this is the metric cylinder. Common problems, low company performance, team doesn't know that it is achieving goals or what goals are, and people are not meeting expectations. I have yet to walk in a company in over 23 years now. Um, yeah, 23 years now, large, medium, or small, that hasn't struggled with company metrics, department metrics, team metrics, individual metrics. You got to have the waterfall. They all transcend down from the parent metric all the way to the individual. People will say things like, we've been working on our KPIs, critical performance indicators, for about a year, and we're just not ready yet. We set these in eight hours in our processes. Wouldn't you like to have a dashboard, build an eight hours, eight hours that you could turn on immediately to know you're on track in the vehicle on your destination or not. Causes, you're missing revenue targets, the parent metric of them all. Costs are too high. You can't afford to hire people, but you don't seem to have enough capacity of people. Um, and you don't have people engage um, and you don't have programs to reward and recognize. Fixes, time metrics to strategy. First off, if you set a goal and it has no metric, good luck. You won't have a dashboard. Set and align performance metrics at all levels, create the waterfall. Measure the right things right. Don't measure things that you never follow up on. That either tells you it's not important or you don't have people's commitment or it's the wrong measure. So measure on-time delivery at a company level, but all the way down to the individual, measure their process time or tack time. They must know their time it takes in each step of the way and measure it and let them measure it. They'll do self-improvement. That's what huddles would be talking about and hold everybody accountable, starting with yourself. If you're the leader, the owner, or the VP, but you have to have metrics all the way down. This is just, uh, you know, some ways to measure database versus emotional approach. Um, this, uh, you got to motivate behavior by letting them have the dashboard, creating custom dashboards for their vehicles, their teams, drive sound business decisions. Eliminate internal competition for resources, common metrics, common resource pools between engineering, office, and production. And then when there's a problem, prioritize and move people to the priority and let people know why. Um, uh, and then align all stakeholders to those metrics and goals. Um, uh, and then lastly, enhance. This will enhance your culture. culture. It'll drive your culture. It will, it will pull things together. Common metrics and rewards drive common behavior. If you don't have common metrics, good luck. So now that we've looked under the hood, I'll show the summary. You can read it as much as I can, I can verbalize it, but let's open it up for questions here with our last three to four minutes. What questions do you have? I know it's a lot. This will be recorded, but look at those symptoms you're feeling, your check engine lights. What are you feeling? Keyword feel, not see, feel. Use all your senses, ears, eyes, nose, everything. Use those senses and then look for root cause and what is driving them. Yes, I got, quote. I got a question. Uh, which sure. fix is best ROI? Which what? Which fix gives us the best ROI? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give the uh, the silver bullets for both of these first strategic plan, no matter how complex, how big or how small your company is with objectives and metrics. Number one fix who would get in a vehicle with their family today and tell your loved ones when they ask, hey, where are we going? Don't know yet. No. And, and think about the reaction. My wife would be we're going to the beach, the mountains. How do I pack all the confusion? So why would you ask your team to do that? That's first fix objectives, metrics, goals. Second fix um, is drive execution tactically against those goals to good 
um, visual management processes and communication, stand-ups in the morning, stand-ups in the evening. If you have multiple shifts, that will write a pass down. But visual management displays, showing those metrics, those objectives and goals, and then asking them what will it take to hit these two silver bullets right there. Other questions? Or challenges? I'll give you a common one. Common one is, do you have to start at strategy? No, your mechanic will start at the cylinder that is still in the check engine light. Why would you? So what is the one that's causing the most pain? But you make one change to one cylinder, you have to look at how it affects the other cylinders. Optimizing production, number one mistake of all manufacturers. Always going to the concrete and doing process improvement without engaging the people. You got to and the office and the engineering and 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 you got to look at the whole motor on the cause and effect of one optimization in one cylinder will sub optimize the whole. There's a chat, couple things in the chat. ROI. Um, other common questions here with our time left. So you can start at the cylinder with the greatest pain, look at the cause and effect of the other cylinders from that perspective. How to get started, if you're interested today, and I'll move to this, to learn more, you can look at this video and um, review it. Second, we have a series, the upcoming, I'm gonna be talking about how to take your organization to 10, setting a clear strategy, that silver bullet. We Each one of these is a impact 30. I will be your master mechanic for a lot of these, but we'll have a couple other guest master mechanics, like my peer, Eric Burton, will be one for um, methods and tools here. So we'll be doing that. Second, if you want to know your check engine lights, you want to assess your vehicle today, we have a, a no-cost assessment that your leadership team takes. It starts with, yes, I want an assessment. Second, we send you an email, you send that link to your leadership team, and then we schedule in advance a two-hour debrief session where a master mechanic like myself comes in, reads your check engine codes, and then and then has a two-hour discussion with your leadership team of what is the pain or the positive, what is the cause, and then what is your leadership team's recommendations, and then we give you a report with our process on how we would fix that. It's low cost, it's no cost. The only cost is time and the um, wherewithal to say, yeah, I want to take that assessment and I want to engage my leadership team. So I am sure we are out of time. If you have questions, send me an email. Let me know. Um, I'll respond. Uh, put it in this chat and then we will see you for the next Impact 30. Have an excellent day and thanks for your time. Thanks, Shane. For those that uh, have extra time, I will stay on the line for the, for five minutes. I'm all yours. Hey, Shane. Uh, yes. In, in the uh, question and answer, your chat has asked us a question. Do you mind addressing that or do you want to type it out to them? Oh, I can address it. I can address it. Um, maybe some bullets on how to get employed to really open up in a meeting uh, setting and getting open, honest dialogue. Absolutely here, Chad. Um, that's that two hour dialogue session. You know, we can we can score and measure our factories. But I'll tell you, the root cause always is with your your uh, a, a conversation. Five S, or excuse me, the five Ys is a beautiful tool. But you got to have trust for them to open up. They trust you're not gonna. They're not gonna identify themselves as an issue, and you pound the nail. They don't want to be hammered. So you got to have a cultural. It's got to be culturally okay for me to say I have a question or I have help needed. Or I have some feedback for you. So that's one. Um, second, five, uh, five whys can be a great tool, but you cannot make it, well, why aren't you doing that? Why aren't you doing this? Say, well, then why do we, you know, why are we having scrap? Because we don't measure it. Why don't we measure it? How would we measure it? When would we measure it? Where would we measure it? Who would measure it in your mind? What do you think? Ask that question. Open-ended questions with a long pause there, but make it safe for them to bring it up. Second, if they give you feedback, let's say they send you an email. I went to a staff once where they wrote in advance because we wanted to hear a stop, start, and continue for us as an organization. And I saw leaders changing that before they presented. I said, time out. That's how they wrote it. It's, it's not, um, there's no uh, profanity, no issues with it. If you do that, you're telling them that you are editing their comments because it's not good enough. 
So do it that way. If you want help doing it, call me, call us. We'll help create a common dialogue. We have a great methodology called Crucial Conversations, and we train you how to do it, your team and your leader. And then we have those crucial conversations. So long-winded answer, because it's a complex one. Anything else there from anybody online? Nothing on our end. I appreciate your time, Shane, on this one. Thank you. No worries. We'll see you next time. Join us next month for an Impact 30 centered on how do you take your organizational uh, to 10? That is how to optimize it deep into strategy and the components of strategy. 